Dear God, school's different now. I don't understand the world, but I know that when hard things happen, I should pray, so that's what I do. I pray that we can keep learning, whatever that looks like, and that we'll be together, even if it's in a whole new way. God, I pray as we step into the unknown future that you continue to show me things about myself and life, things I can't learn in books. Be with me, God, no matter how this year unfolds. Help us, God, to do our best every day. Even when every day isn't what we thought it would be. Keep us safe and keep us learning, one day at a time. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Well, good morning, church. Good morning to those of you guys that are outside too. Hopefully you can hear me through the radio now. I forgot to turn that on this morning, so it was all blank. Uh, this, uh, this week, uh, we'll be praying for those that are heading back to school. Some down south, I think of in Grand Rapids and that, have already headed back to school. Some people are doing school online. Uh, I know our kids have the option of doing online or doing in person. We're going to try in person and see how that goes. Uh, but, you know, this is such an odd thing, isn't it? I mean, usually... You know, we can tell our kids, well, yeah, you're going to be fine. We've been there before. We went through it too. We haven't been through this. They're going, our kids are going through something that we've never experienced ourselves, aren't they? Uh, and that, is, that makes things a whole lot different. So let's be praying for our kids as they head back to school for, for their safety, but for their engagement, for the teachers as well, who are going to uh, be doing both online or in classroom. It's, it's going to be a unique year and, and give a lot of grace and patience because we're all just figuring this thing out. Amen? Uh, I am feeling great this morning, and uh, this morning I want to also recognize those that are, are going to be watching online as well, and those that uh, have been more disconnected because this has been a lengthy period. And so uh, I've got some guys that I pray with in the morning before church, and we've been praying uh, for those that haven't been able to make it to church. Uh, and we want to make sure that they still feel connected. And I just feel moved this morning to say, hey, make sure that you're making phone calls to people that you haven't seen in a while. Just let them know that you're thinking of them and uh, missing them and uh, making sure that we stay in this together. Amen. Uh, we are the church and we got to come alongside of each other and we're all in different positions, different uh, predicaments. And so for those that aren't able to be a part of the community on, on Sunday morning or during the week, we want them to be able to know that they're missed, they're loved, uh, they're still a part of our community, and we can't wait until we can all gather together. But until then, we'll reach out to each other, and that's what we've got to do. Uh, this morning, I'd love to open our service with a reading from Psalm 16. It's really one of my favorite psalms. And it gives me, it's sort of a, a personal life psalm for me, so I'm glad to be able to share it with you this morning. It says, Keep me safe, O God. For in you I take refuge. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord, and apart from you, I have no good thing. As for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those will increase who run after other gods. I will not pour out their libations of blood or take their names upon my lips. Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. The word of the Lord. So the other night I was, I awoke in the night and I was thinking about all those folks that we haven't seen in a while and I uh, haven't been able to connect with everyone. And I was just kind of complaining to the Lord about, man, how can we, how can we get, fix this? And so, you know, it says, even at night, my heart instructs me. And the Lord reminded me that I'm not in this alone, uh, that I've got a whole church of folks 
uh, that can take part in that. And so he's instructed me uh, to let you know that uh, we all have to be checking in with the folks around us. Amen? So that's the word of the Lord. So there, let's pray. Uh, Father, give you thanks. And we do thank you for our friends and we miss those that we haven't seen in a while. And we pray over them, uh, especially this morning. And we pray that where they are this morning, that they might have a deep sense of your presence. Uh, for those who might be even uh, tuning in this morning, uh, we thank you that they're able to join us in that way. And uh, we pray, Lord, uh, that for those that are, are missing and, and feel isolated or feel disconnected, uh, that you'd help us as a body to be able to reach out to one another, that you'd help them to reach back uh, so that we can at least be in this and stay connected in the ways that we can that you've given us through technology, through telephone calls, uh, through Zoom uh, Bible studies and prayer uh, retreats and uh, help us to understand these tools and, and to be able to connect and meet with one another that, uh, that even in this time we might not neglect gathering together in the ways that we can. Uh, we pray over this service this morning and we thank you that you are present, uh, that you are alive, that you are with us. And we feel that hope, uh, even in the midst of the chaos of our world and all that's going on, uh, we have a firm foundation. And we thank you for that foundation and we thank you that we're in it together. So this morning, Lord, uh, we lift our voices to you in one accord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We've got two hymns this morning, and the first one is His Name is Wonderful. You'll uh, find those lyrics in your bulletins or on the screen overhead. Why don't you go ahead and stand with me if you're indoors, and uh, we'll sing His Name is Wonderful. And then we're going to sing more precious than silver. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, last week, I didn't notice until too late that I totally missed the congregational prayer. And uh, quite frankly, I felt like something was missing uh, that day. So uh, thankfully, this morning, uh, it has come to my attention. And I want to be in prayer and give you some updates, but also take in some prayer requests this morning, too. Uh, on the back of your bulletins, there are a number of, of folks whose names are listed there that we've been praying for, both 
uh, the Evergreen family and uh, friends of Evergreen, but also uh, Lori does a great job of putting together a renewed prayer list every, at the beginning of every month, and you'll find copies of it uh, in the back uh, fellowship area by the prayer station there, and we also send those out online. So if you're not on our email list, you're missing a whole lot of updates uh, because we update all kinds of things from, from links to the service on Sunday morning and the video messages to uh, how to join us for Bible study, even by Zoom. So wherever you are, you can come in by Zoom, join us for Bible study. We're uh, toward the end of our Bible study on the book, White Awake, a discussion group that we've been talking about some of the racial issues that are going on in our country and uh, talking about how we can maybe wake up to here to listen and to, to be in prayer, to be reconcilers and mediators, to, to see things that maybe we haven't seen before uh, and, to be, and to be more open and to be praying with our brothers and sisters who are uh, going through a lot of tension to saying that there's issues. So this has been a great study and we'll be moving into another study in a couple of weeks on Wednesday night uh, by Max Lucado. It will be a video study and it's on his book, Jesus, uh, but we'll be hearing from him. So 19, 20 minute videos that if you're on Zoom, you'll actually see it right on your screen and then you'll be able to join in the discussion that follows. So we'll have a study guide and we sent out information for that. Uh, and also when we do our, our prayer retreats, uh, extended prayer retreats, which I hope to do more often, uh, you'll be able to join in on Zoom or you can come in person. So both options are available and it's been actually a lot of fun to be able to be connected in that way. So uh, we're finding new ways to connect and continue to journey with one another. Uh, this morning, I want to continue praying for Betty Kampfeis. Talked with her this week, and uh, she had a knee replacement surgery, and her, her therapy is going well. She says she's not feeling too much pain, except for when she goes through therapy. And so uh, we'll also be able to send up things, you know, updates on that. Uh, we do uh, through the email as well, and you can find out what different needs are, too. Sometimes there are, there are needs for, for things to borrow uh, when people go through surgeries, whether they be walkers or other equipment, and we're thankful for those that have been able to be there, and Betty gives her thanks for those that have been walking with her through this and letting, lending her things that she didn't even know she needed until now. Uh, Grateful for the, these guys that had COVID, uh, had minor symptoms, but are, are back with us now and, and are COVID free and able to, so we're thankful for Bob and for Zig and for Jack Weibiga and Jack put in the new security cameras, him and Larry Lampin the other day. Uh, so, so we're thankful for all that, that takes place behind the scenes here yet. And uh, Bob was able to be a part of that. In fact, Bob is going to set them up so we can do the video capture now on those things. So we're learning new things here at Evergreen, I'll tell you. Uh, and also, uh, Terry, that we've been praying for, he's on the first responders and fire department. He is home. He's doing a lot better. He did have to come home with an oxygen, mask, oxygen tank. And uh, he had COVID and had more severe symptoms. But we're thankful for the guys that, on the team that have been surrounding him. And for those that aren't even on the first responders team that have come by. And I hear they're getting ready to split some wood for him because uh, he wasn't able to catch up for that. So we love the way the church is reaching out. Uh, Vern is doing well. He's back home. His daughter was with him and now his son has taken over. Uh, but he is dealing with an infection or bacteria uh, that, he has, that he's being treated for and putting ointment on each day. But he actually has a piece of his skull that is missing right now. And until this bacteria is completely gone, uh, they won't be able to put that in. And it's about a three-month process. Uh, so continue praying for him. He really wants to come to church and, uh, and his family and I am telling him this is not the time. Uh, you need to be careful right now. And, uh, and, and so he, he says to say hi to everyone. He's thankful for all the prayers. He's thankful for all the phone calls. He's thankful for the cards that he's getting. Uh, and he says that he loves you guys and he wanted me to say thank you to you uh, on this Sunday morning. So, so I have done that. Uh, let's continue in prayer. Uh, I talked to Hank and Judy the other day and they're doing well, but they have some kind of some chronic issues that keep them from being able to come to church. And so just be praying for them. They're adapting to this isolation thing, uh, but still having some issues and uh, that, that are more long-term health things. And so just continue to intercede for them. Any other praise reports or prayer requests or updates that you have that we can be praying alongside of you with as a church family this morning? Bob. Um, I had a procedure done Friday, and I had to get a COVID test before that, and it came back negative. So. Amen. Good news. So uh, for those, from, I'm going to repeat things for those that are outside. Uh, Bob Way had a, uh, another test for COVID, came back negative because he has a procedure he has to undergo. No, I already, already did. did. And it, it went well, and he had to be yes. COVID free for that. So yeah. good. Excellent. Praise report. All right, any other praise reports or prayer requests? Sandy. Yes, Tuesday we had the fresh food distribution. Uh, thank you for all the people that helped. That was a blessing. We served 101 families, and uh, we'll look forward to it next, before Tuesday and next 
Uh, I'm thankful for all those that continue to follow, volunteer at the fresh food distribution. We've really had enough people every time to be able to make that happen. And there is a bit of a risk. We do wear you know, masks and socially distance as much as possible. But there are times where we can't do that well because someone's going to hold a bag while we put stuff in it. And uh, so there is a risk to it. But we've got people in deep need right now. And we were able to serve 101 families. So thanks for all those that join and be a part of that. Uh, yes, Lorraine. Um. Okay. But uh, it's still, um, we're still praying that that hematoma goes away and that everything goes well with the pregnancy. Okay. And what's your granddaughter's name? Aaliyah. Aaliyah? Mm-hmm. So we're praying for Aaliyah, who is uh, pregnant with child and uh, went through the scary process of having thought that she had a miscarriage, uh, but it doesn't. She has hematomia, which I don't know exactly what that is, uh, but we'll be praying that that resolves and has a healthy pregnancy and a healthy delivery. Mm-hmm. Okay, our our hearts and our thoughts are with you. Okay, so so it's hard, but sometimes uh, the passing is exactly it's the time. So so pray we'll continue to pray for the extended family as well. Just in, in missing her and saying goodbye for Lorraine's sister who who went to be with the Lord. Okay. Okay. Any other praise reports or prayer requests, John? Okay, surgery tomorrow for cancer. All right, he's at the beginning of this journey, and we'll pray that they're able to, to be able to get it all out and he'll have a clean, clean bill, a clean slate there. But we'll be praying uh, with him through this. Absolutely. All right, any other praise reports or prayer requests this morning? Zeke. We start college tomorrow. Yes, uh, so pretty exciting. Uh, the, the older kids are doing a program uh, through their school in Scottville with the community college, and so they're doing courses in both now, and, uh, and they start tomorrow. So we'll be praying for all the kids that'll be, that have started or are going back to school. So we're excited for you guys, and, uh, and it will be different. We know that, but we, we believe that you guys can adapt. Uh, and Sandy. Okay, okay. But they, the surgery went well? All right, very good. So we're praying, praying for uh, John Decline's sister, Carol, who's stage four cancer, had surgery, surgery went well, but a lot of pain. So we'll be praying. Uh, that that pain lets up, and we'll pray for her as she continues on this journey, this difficult journey. Hmm. Uh, let's continue interceding for, for our nation and uh, all that is going on with the, the conflict, the chaos, uh, Wisconsin, uh, Portland, Richmond, Virginia. A, a lot of things are going on in a lot of places, and we've got missionaries in some of those places. Portland, uh, Larry and the family will be actually heading back to Portland and seeing Shane and Jen, the Doyle family, and uh, we'll continue praying for them for wisdom and discernment as they continue to do ministry on the ground there uh, and what's become a pretty volatile area. So, And also for Chris and Kara in Richmond, Virginia, where there's been a lot of conflict and a lot of chaos and uh, continue to pray for them. And also, uh, I talked to Chris this week. Uh, and he's our missionary in YWAM, Virginia. And continue praying for Isaac, their child, uh, as he has seizures, he has epilepsy, and uh, it's just a difficult thing to navigate. He told me that he was, we actually saw him on the screen, and I'm hoping that we can get Shane and Jen uh, here live during our church service in the near future. But he told me that um, that Kara left with, with Isaac because he actually started having a seizure during uh, while we were while we were talking with him, and and so what, what a difficult situation that is. It can occur at any time, uh, but we're continue praying with them, hoping with them, and they are seeing progress. So we'll continue to keep our missionaries on our thoughts and prayers as well. Let's go to the Lord. Uh, Father, we do lift up our, our friends. Uh, we think of many in our congregation. Uh, we give you thanks for those that have overcome COVID and uh, for the mild uh, the, the mild symptoms that. Uh, most of our members have had. We're grateful for that. 
Uh, we continue to pray and thank you for Terry, who has returned from the hospital now. And uh, we pray for him as he goes through a major life adjustment as he's on oxygen and, and it could be a long-term thing. And we're praying, Lord, that it's not. We're praying for healing and for restoration. Um, and we thank you that you have brought him out of this and uh, restored him to us. And we thank you for all those that are surrounding him in love and encouragement and hands-on uh, in ways to help. Uh, we pray for those that are recovering from surgeries. We, we uh, think of uh, friends uh, within the congregation, friends of the congregation like Betty, and uh, we think of John's sister Carol as she's coming through, and Mike who uh, has his first surgery and is just beginning to deal with cancer. We pray for healing and for restoration, for uh, just a, a great spiritual foundation and encouragement and peace that surpasses all understanding. Uh, Lord, we uh, lift up Marsha Lovers as she continues uh, with the hip uh, in recovery from the, her hip surgery. We thank you for how much easier this has been than her knee replacement surgery and uh, give praise for that as she gets ready to come home from Mary Freebed uh, today. Uh, Lord, we lift up uh, friends of the congregation also that uh, are going through issues that we're not privy to, uh, things that are, are personal, that they're going through maybe silently, and we just pray uh, that we all know that you are the God who is with us and that you help us navigate relational issues, that you help us navigate spiritual issues, that you help us navigate physical issues that we go through, that you help us navigate some of the mental issues, uh, things like dementia uh, that, that some of our loved ones are experiencing, uh, which are especially difficult during this time, just trying to understand uh, why we have to wear masks again and again each day uh, is especially difficult and confusing. Uh, and so we thank you that you help us navigate through these things, that you give us the grace we need. We know that we are in a broken world and that we experience many of its brokenness and it makes us long for restoration and long for the return of Christ all the more. Uh, Lord, we lift up our community and we pray for these kids that are going back to school and we pray for the teachers that we're trying to do things in new ways and no doubt is very stressful and very difficult as they navigate and try to juggle multiple platforms. And for our kids who are going through something that we haven't gone through ourselves before, going to school in the midst of a pandemic, wearing masks, trying to know what it means to socially distance while engage in their studies and friendships. And so we pray for them. Uh, pray for uh, the Foise kids this morning, and I thank you that they get to do this dual program, and it's exciting for them, but also challenging during these times. So give us the grace that we need. Pray for our college kids that are going to college for the first time and are maybe doing it online, which isn't the ideal that they wanted to do. They wanted to be in person. They wanted to have that experience. For those that are having that experience, but it'll be very different than what they anticipated. And we pray for those uh, that are working in in difficult circumstances and situations, all of our first responders, our medical teams. We pray for our police force, uh, who are especially under a lot of stress these days. Well, with all of the political situations and uh, the hurt feelings and the frustrations, and uh, we just pray for their protection. And we pray that you help grow us as a nation and our understanding that we might be able to sit at the table and listen and hear one another and be able to see through one another's eyes we pray for our nation as well as we are in the midst of one of the most uh, volatile political times uh, that we could possibly be in. And a whole, lot of, uh, a whole lot of maybe exaggeration on each side uh, telling us uh, how important it is and how much this depends on a certain man being elected. And Lord, uh, help us not to ever give in to that. Help us to know that you are our rock and our fortress and that our future is in your hands and in the hands of no one man. And help us to trust that you are with us no matter what, no matter who's elected, and that you will help us to be able to come together and that there's only a way forward when we come together in you and we reach across as the people of this nation, that we reach across and are able to find ways to sit at the table together, even as Jesus Christ found ways to sit at the table with religious leaders and with sinners and to be able to bring us together and show us the way forward, which is an unusual way indeed, but it is the way. We lift all these things up 
And we know that it's only by the power of the Holy Spirit at work within us that any of this has any hope or possibility. And we thank you that you have brought us through in the past. You've brought the church through in the past. You've brought nations through in the past. And even when nations rise and when they fall, one thing has been certain, that Jesus Christ is still Lord of all, and he still sits on the throne, and we still worship you. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. All right, at this time, our uh, kids that would like to go to Sunday school are dismissed for Sunday school this morning. And who is our Sunday school teacher this morning? Miss Faith. Miss Faith, thank you.